Welcome back. It's season two of Bucko Banter, and we're pleased to bring you again our co-hosts for this year, Fred Rosano and Matthew Peasley. We are back and better than ever. Bucko Banter is back for a second year due to popular demand. We're back and better than ever, just like the Pirates themselves. Back-to-back postseason berths for the Pirates. They did bow out of the 2014 wildcard game, obviously a little bit earlier in the playoffs than we wanted to and kind of what we expected. But Madison Bumgarner was dominant in that wildcard game, and he was dominant throughout the postseason. He was a one-man wrecking crew all the way through the World Series. Yep, started it and ended the World Series in Game 7 there by coming in for the save. So just That was last year. Let's talk about this year. Yep. Good all right, let's... Uh, Let's look at some of the changes they've made. Uh, let's start with starting pitching. Man. Yeah, Usually it, it's almost a similar rotation to last year. You kind of sub out Edinson Volquez, who signed with the Royals in the offseason. But the Pirates re-signed A.J. Burnett, who was with the Phillies last year. Uh, led the league in losses and walks, but he also had the most innings pitched of his career, which mm-hmm. is kind of impressive because he was hurt for some of the season and played through that pain a little bit. But he w- says that this is probably going to be his last year in the big leagues. He wanted to come back to Pittsburgh to end his long career here. Mm-hmm. Just spoke highly of the Pirates and the organization yeah. and his yeah. teammates. And uh, you could say what you want about him re-signing somewhere else last year, but his loyalty this year and the way he just glowed about the Pirates was pretty impressive. And that's the kind of leader you want on your team. Right. And uh, the rest of the uh, starting staff? Uh, Francisco Liriano looks to be the number one starter, uh, as he had the opening day start and pitched well. Uh, Garrett Cole is probably the number two, with Burnett being number three. Hopefully this is a year for Garrett Cole to kind of assert himself yeah. and be the dominant pitcher. Step up a bit. That's what he was drafted in the first round to be a, be an ace, and he's still young, but hopefully this is his really breakout year. Uh, the last two spots in the rotation are going to be Vance Worley and Jeff Locke. Originally, Charlie Morton was getting mm-hmm. that uh, spot, but he started the year on the disabled list, rightfully so, because... He wasn't too hot at the end of spring training, but uh, Vance Worley, I think, earned a spot over Jeff Locke. Be- Funny how those with. things w- worked themselves out. Everybody was up in arms because Worley was was not going to be starting, and then immediately after that, no, two he, days later, Morton was starting. He goes on the DL mm-hmm. or whatever. So uh, Worley was a good pickup by the Pirates last year, and hopefully he builds on that year. And Jeff Locke was an all-star yep. last year, so hopefully he gets back his numbers from the beginning of last season and translate that into into this year. Relief pitching, I'd look at that as uh, as about the same as last year. There's some additions, some subtractions. Overall, I think there's there's more arms down there. Uh, they sent down Holtzcomb, and uh, they got Archimedes. Caminero. Caminero, and, who throws about 100 miles an hour. And there's so also got R- Radhamus. Is that how you Liz. say that? Radhamus. Or, Liz, Liz. or is it Lise? Yeah, so I think those two guys are – almost dark horses. I mean, they, mm-hmm. they've had promising careers when they were younger, and they kind of lost their stuff. But that, uh, again, Two we, more reclamation projects. For Ray Searage. For Ray Searage. He's turned around Volquez and Burnett and Liriano, and now he's going to help do that in the bullpen with Lee. And, and yeah. they have a couple others in there replacing Justin Wilson. But overall, I think it's a, it's a good uh, good balance there again sure. with uh, a good I'm, relief core, but probably, you know, Probably among the best relief corps, so. yeah. according to the past or whatever. And Tony Watson had a good year last year. He gave up the winning run in opening day. But uh, it's one game. There's 161 yeah. left. And uh, he's still a solid reliever and one of the best in the National League. And Mark Melanson's back again to close yeah. the door in the ninth inning as the sa- as the uh, closer. How about the bench? Uh, bench, I think, got stronger than it has oh, in the past way, couple years, too. Way, way stronger. Um, the headliner of that is probably Jung Ho Gong, who uh, they paid – to come over from the Korean baseball organization. Um, it's, we'll just have to see how he translates in the field. They said his defense might be a little suspect, but he can play multiple positions. Mm-hmm. Supposed to have a strong bat, too. He lead, led the Korean leagues in home runs. 40 home runs last year. It'd be nice to have that kind of power, but, again, the pitching is probably more dominant in the major leagues than it is overseas. But it's a, it, it was a nice wild card. Yeah, he's, a, he's definitely an unknown because he's the first, I think, position player that's – From that signed, specific yeah. league, yeah. A couple they, uh, pitchers have, have been fared fairly well. Yeah. The uh, overall bench, you know, like you said, it, it, it's much improved. Look at the guys we had. That I, I think that was Neil Huntington's biggest goal is to improve that bench. They got Sean Rodriguez. Sean, I like him. He's versatile uh, too. They, they, they traded – uh, Travis Snyder, which caused some eyebrows to no. be raised, but uh, 
Corey Hart, uh, who could play yeah, first yeah. in the outfield, and he's had a history of some good offensive yeah. numbers in Milwaukee. Yeah. Um, and Tony Sanchez is a backup catcher for now. Right. There's still Chris Stewart who's hurt, but again, this might be Tony Sanchez's year to prove that he's mm-hmm. the legitimate first round pick. Yeah. And they he did well in spring training too. Yeah, really improved. And uh, Andrew Lambeau, who's kind of getting a second chance. Uh, he's had his almost spot handed to him last year and didn't live up to that, but hopefully. He turns around and realizes that this is, might be his last yeah, show, too. It could be very well be a last chance. How about uh, the overall position players in the uh, starting lineup? Really, it's about the same as last year, save for the biggest thing behind home plate. Uh, yeah. We obviously lose Russell Martin to the Blue Jays. He signed that monster contract up there. But it's funny how the Pirates and the Yankees just – Recycle their catchers. Uh, we had <laughs> well, Russell. This is, this is the third one. Russell run Martin, Chris Stewart from we got him two years ago, and then Francisco Cervelli, who's kind of served as a backup in for mm-hmm. the Yankees the past couple of years, needs to stay healthy. I said his he's a solid guy, but his injury history is, is pretty yeah. He's tough. had some freakish injuries uh, over the years, but uh, overall, I I just like that that starting lineup looks pretty potent. I mean, yeah. there's. It, if everybody's going on all cylinders, there's, I don't think there's really a, a, a weak link there at all. There's talk of Josh Harrison maybe regressing from what he did last year, but I think he's going to be just the same reliable guy he proved to be last year as a spark plug at the top of the lineup yeah. to get on base, what? get extra bases. Um, Gregory Polanco who, and Andrew McCutcheon and Starling Marte probably make up the best outfield in baseball, uh, if, which is If, if not crazy. this year, next year, yeah. or whatever, yeah, that's, that's going to be a – Potent. I think I think Marte's going to break out this year uh, to hopefully set a, a lot of a lot of optimism. Yeah. A lot of optimism going into the uh, 2015 season, and uh, we uh, we're anxious to get started. We already did with opening day a couple days ago. I was lucky enough and fortunate enough to go down to Cincinnati for it. Awesome game despite the loss. Uh, it, it, but it was a special day for Cincinnati. I mean, it was different being. Oh, a, they be, they go crazy. It was different being a visiting fan for something opening day. But they had uh, most people aren't even picking the Reds to w- go to the playoffs or win the division, maybe finish. But there was so much optimism brewing from six a.m. till the time gates opened. Just a big sea of red. It was almost like uh, the Pirates wild card game. Cincinnati's always been the opening day. Yeah, they, they always open the season. Years and years and years until they, you know, recently they started, started with games the Sunday on Sundays, night and, yeah, and also some of the games in Japan. They, they right. started not too right. long ago. But yeah, that was it was just an awesome scene, and um, it's just a yearly tradition that you go down there. There's a big parade. It was pretty cool. The game itself um, started off kind of kind of slow from the Pirates. Or actually, it was good well, p- got- good pitching from Liriano and Johnny Cueto. Um, the Pirates. Uh, or Liriano gave up a home run to Jay Bruce, and he balked in that run. That yeah, run. that was it. Was close. I mean, that's a good eye from home plate umpire John Hirschbeck to catch that. But I mean, he kind of just yeah, he, he, moved I think his he shoulder did. a little bit. It but, was a balk. Yeah, I think. Uh, but the Pirates got two runs back on a big home run by Andrew McCutcheon, who doesn't need those dreadlocks anymore. Obviously, he <laughs> cut those and still has that same sweet swing and crushed one over the fence. But um, what was really kind of tough to swallow was the defense of the Reds. Uh, Billy Hamilton yeah, made had two, a diving catch, a couple nice stops. Awesome. Marlon Byrd, the former Pirate, Rob Polanco of a RBI double yeah. with a r- over-the-shoulder running catch. And, um, yeah, it was just couldn't get those hits to fall. They eventually – I mean, they were hitting the ball pretty well towards the end of the game. Um, hopefully those find some holes as the season goes yeah, on. But uh, just one game, Todd Frazier, props to him for coming through in the no, clutch. No props. No, no props to him. <laughs> And t- Tony Watson said he it was a mistake pitch he gave to him and uh, got over the. I, th- I think the ball's still floating. He crushed. He really yeah, crushed he that crush one. It. But uh, it was fun just to be back with baseball, yeah. and we're we get it all the way through October now. Uh, hopefully into November if the Pirates can make a World yeah. Series. But uh, I'm sure we'll be there, or at least very close by uh, come the end of September. And be sure to stick with Bucko Banner for updates throughout the season and more segments coming your way next. Matt and Fred, it's time for a new segment on Bucko Banter called Three for Three. And take it away, Matt. (laughs) Thank you, Pirate Panda. Leading off with my first three for three is McCutcheon New Haircut. A couple weeks ago, uh, McCutcheon wanted to reveal a big secret he had. Cut off his trademark dreadlocks, kind of his signifying feature about him. 
I mean, everybody throughout baseball recognized him by his long flowing hair that went all the way down his back, but now it's gone. He got a fresh new haircut. It's actually a pretty stylish look. Do you know why he got that haircut? Did you re read why he had gotten it? No. He said because uh, he wanted to show, he originally grew it. To show that not everybody that has dreadlocks it, are, are bad. bad people or gang members, that they, you know, there's good in, in everyone. And he's one of the nicest, best, all around good guys in sports yeah. as there is. And so he was a kind of a good role model for that. And still a good role model, even though he's a little short there. Maybe it might give him a little bit he's more, more aerodynamic. Aerodynamic. He can get around the bases a little bit easier. And uh, he's not Samson or anything. He didn't need the hair to give his power because he had a home run the other day. But, uh, yep, new haircut for McCutcheon. Fresh new season, fresh new look for the Pirates leader. Number two, Jung Ho Gong. We talked about him in our previous segment, the kind of the unknown mystery player of the Pirates that they brought over from Korea. Hasn't had a chance to play yet, but um, he'll be one of the top bats off the bench, and we'll have to see if his game translates overseas here. But I'm, I like the pickup, and I think he's going to be solid. My last one is Morton, disabled forever. He's been fighting injuries his entire uh, career. Uh, he kind of blamed his control issues at the end of spring training on his hip surgery. I mean, he's had arm surgeries, hip surgeries. It seems like once he starts to get in the groove, then boom, Something he gets another, another injury to put him back. And he's still young enough to make a good yeah. career, and he's he's been a decent starter when he's been healthy yeah, he for the Pirates. To. But if his injuries keep up, I don't know how much longer they can – they can utilize him, um, but hopefully he does recover from his 15-day disabled list stint, and it ends up being the starting pitcher he was tabbed to be. But as of now, I don't I don't see Morton really making an impact this year. Oh, I I think he will. Hmm. I think he will. I think he'll bounce back. And he, he, you know he he pitched fairly good the first couple spring training no. games. He seemed to regress, but uh, uh, I, I think he'll be fine. Time for you to step up to the plate. My leadoff. Three on three is Alvarez playing first. Now, we, we I think he started off pretty good uh, hitting wise, but he also had a couple bad throws Throwing, at second yeah. base, and I think there was even one throw at home plate that was that was pretty bad. Those are still the issues uh, that plagued him at third. And then. Yeah, uh, hopefully he can you know get get himself rid of that. Uh, it's just a little bit scary right now. Yeah. Uh, my second one is uh, Teak looking good, and I, I you know everyone's familiar with. I think it was I think it was on uh, New Year's Eve or Christmas Eve where he wound up being you know, ill there and having to have a, a heart transplant. Yeah, as a heart transplant. Yeah, yeah. but he uh, seems to have bounced back. He's looking pretty good back on the uh, the root sports uh, for New Year, and he's you know looking refreshed yep. and healthy. My third is fair weather fans, and oh, we lose a game yesterday, and. You, everybody, I looked on a couple of the different blogs already. People, there are 161 <laughs> games left. We don't want you as a fan. If you're if if you're in there not rooting against the Pirates, what? And you're you're immediately condemn them after losing one game, one game. Mm, yeah. And then they'll be the first ones back on the bandwagon yeah, oh, yeah. when we're oh, yeah. when we're 20 games oh, above I 500. I, I knew they were going to have a good team. <laughs> I knew they were going to be tough this yeah. year. I've read somewhere that the Oakland Athletics. I think they won last night. But they've dropped eleven straight season openers oh, up really? until this year, and they've had playoff runs, and they've they haven't won a World Series, but they've made successful years. Yeah, so. if I was a, an Ace fan, man, it'd be crazy because he just Billy Bean just changes that yeah. that that uh, roster over and over. But he, I mean, he just makes turns it work. It over. Makes yeah, it work though. He, he does seem to be able to turn it over and, and make it work. And I mean, they're always in the running for the playoffs. Yep. I mean, very rarely they're out of it, but. Uh, those are our first three. Uh, for both of us, our three, three, four, three. Three for three. Three yeah. for three. We're batting a thousand so far on the That's season. That's right. We both are. Coming up next. The good. The bad. The ugly. And. Ooh, I'm getting a bit worried. And we are thrilled to bring you another new segment on Buckle Banter called The Good, The Bad, The Ugly, and Ooh, I'm a Bit Worried. Take it away, Fred. Thanks again, Pirate Panda. And our new segment now starts off with the good. And my good for right now is uh, Pedro Alvarez's offensive stats for spring training. He, uh, I think he had four or five home runs, quite a few RBIs, and a pretty solid average. Hopefully he's 
he can continue that through the season and have a big year, which I think he is going to have a big turnaround. Year. Yeah, 35 home runs a couple years ago. I'd love mm-hmm. to see him duplicate that. Uh, my bad is, uh, is Jared Hughes. I know that he had a spectacular season last year, but uh, an earned run average of 10, 10.50, I think it was, in spring training. Uh, that's 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 kind of bad. that is nah, that's bad. I mean, you you don't you don't want to go into a season with that sort of locked into your mind immediately. You know? right. So he needs to he needs to get those ground balls. Probably going to be facing better pit or better batters mm-hmm. uh, in the regular season than he did in the Grapefruit League too. Yeah, that's for sure. The ugly is the Charlie Morton line on the last game he pitched before he went on the disabled list, and, and I still think he's going to come you know, bounce sure. back and have a good season. Uh, once he gets back into the groove there and gets things worked, we you know you keep forgetting that he did have an injury that you know that held him back last year and had the surgery and everything. But he had, he had uh, one and two thirds innings, five walks, two hit batsmen in <laughs> one of the pitches. This is shades of Steve Blass. He pitched behind one of the batters, <laughs> and I, I can remember when Bob Prince said, "Folks." I really hate to bring this to you," he said on the radio. There, he said, uh, "But Steve just threw that pitch behind the batter, and if Charlie Morton did that, I mean, I didn't. I don't know if that game was on TV or not. I'll, it may have been. Yeah, on. it was a Saturday but game. But if he threw behind, that's man. that's something that he needs to get straightened out pretty quick. I think I listened to that one on the radio. They I mean, they scored four runs before he even recorded an out in the top of the first inning. So, yeah, he looked. Yeah, he it, looked was, ugly. it was. It, yeah, it was definitely <laughs> ugly. And as for my, ooh, I'm getting a bit worried. It's back again to Alvarez and his throws. Uh, he, I don't know if it's a mental block or what. It has to be a mental block, obviously. But uh, uh, he just he can't afford to do that. You can't afford to, you know, a guy at second base or third base throwing it home and just giving up a run like that. But yeah. hopefully he'll, you know, he'll get it out of his system. But uh, it is yeah, it is worrisome. His throwing errors cost runs oh, last year from big, third base over. Oh, I mean, he's, big not gonna, time. he's not going to have as many throwing opportunities this year. But you just hope that he gets what he needs to yeah. put on the ball when he does make those throws a second. Or and he's only or, been there a few games again huh? now with uh, uh, playing at first. Yeah, playing at first, even toward the end of last year before right. he got hurt, and he's got one game this year. Yeah. But uh, that takes care of my. Four categories there, Matt. Thing, it's good to be back. It is good to be back, and we'll see you next time on a Bucko Banter. Well, here at Bucko Banter, we want to pass a little bit of information along to you, the viewers. On Thursday, April sixteenth, the Hickory Lions Club in Hickory, Pennsylvania, is presenting the Myron Cope Legend Sports Award to former Pirate and current broadcaster Steve Blass. Uh, Steve Blass will be there along with a list of other guests that include former Pirates manager Jim Leland, other Pirate broadcasters Greg Brown, Bob Walk, Tim Neverett, and former Pirate broadcaster Lanny Terry, who I grew up listening to. Uh, it should be a fun night, and um, we'd love to have you out there and join us. Oh, it does sound like a good lineup. Jim Leland and, and Steve Blass. Steve Blass is hilarious wherever, wherever he talks. He's a very, very funny guy. Yeah, but I think I've talked to him once or twice before, but I'm looking forward to mm-hmm. having a meal and Listen to what he has to say again because he love listening to them on TV and I'm, I'm, I bet they're even better in person. So again, it's Thursday, April sixteenth at the Hickory Fire Hall. At doors open at five p.m. and they're going to have a bunch of other stuff. Uh, dinner at six thirty, auctions and raffles. See you there. Segment and now, now segment news. number two. <laughs> uh, now a new segment on Bucko Banter called Three for Three, Matt and Fred. All right. <laughs> <Good>. Ready? <laughs> We're back. <laughs>